Yeah, I, I have unmuted you, but um, <laughs> you, you you need oh. to do it. You have it in the corner, like right <laughs> upper corner. Yeah. Okay. So now. I think some people get frozen now. <laughs> Let's just start somehow and, and we see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that the answer the first question that I'm usually asked, why, why Malaysia? Uh, and one of the reasons is because not many people go there. Like when I talk with people, they like it's, it's, it's quite common that the people travel in Southeast Asia and, and they go to Thailand and, and Bali and, and those places. But I have actually never met anyone who has ever been to Malaysia. Um, and then, um, yeah, secondly, I found really cheap tickets that they cost like 400 euros. It was less than 400 euros uh, for the return ticket. And I felt like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. Just wanted to say that um, I spent there six weeks and um, it wasn't all the time in Malaysia, but it was mainly in Malaysia. But I spent one week in Bali. I will skip that. It's like Bali is it's so famous now. Everyone heard of it. It's, it's boring already. <laughs> and, um, I also passed by Singapore uh, for like three days. And then I spent a few days in um the south part of of thailand like close to the border with malaysia but the rest was in malaysia um i will try to show this presentation <coughs> so it's gonna work Yeah, I guess um, it's 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 not loading. I don't know. I guess most of the people wouldn't even find Malaysia on on the map. Like, can you locate Malaysia on the map? I guess if uh, like if people can, they, they usually think of the the Malay Peninsula, right? Like where Singapore is, and and yeah. Yeah. but they have another part in in Borneo. Uh, I will share the screen. Let's try. Can you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, that, that's why I placed this map here because they, they usually, uh, there should be a pointer as well. Can you see this? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh -huh. Can you mm -hmm. see the pointer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah, cool. It's a red dot. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, so yeah, that's the that's the peninsula uh, apart, and yeah, that's the, usually people think of, and they are aware of. But there is also this part in Borneo, and um, yeah, like the island is is divided in two parts. The northern part, let's say, is Malaysian, and the southern part is uh, Indonesian. It's also called Kalimantan, and that's the Indonesian name for Borneo, but it's the same island. Um, also, what I didn't realize when I was going there is, um, um, you know, I just, um, I planned it a bit. Like, I didn't have, like, specific plan. Um, I usually travel like that. It's, it's pretty spontaneous, and I just, I just plan as I go. It was pretty much the same here. I just had, like, framework because... Uh, I needed to buy uh, plane tickets for for traveling within within Malaysia or like within South Southeast Asia, and uh, that's actually what I did. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna fly like all the way east, and then I'm gonna travel from there to like south, or it's 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 like southwest. But I actually didn't didn't realize that um, it's the the third largest island in the world, even though it doesn't seem so. But this is like you know, 2,000 kilometers or something. <laughs> uh, 
And when <laughs> I started to travel, I actually realized that uh, I didn't have that much time. And at some point I had to hop on the plane and, and to the plane to, to, to cut the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's actually really big. It doesn't seem so big, but it's, it's pretty big. Um, so anyway, uh, this is the trip. This is the journey I did. It's, it's, um, I took plane a few times, but uh, more or less it was on the, on the ground. And uh, I'm gonna skip Bali, I'm gonna skip Singapore. I'm gonna start with uh, Borneo. Yeah, now it's freezing. Can you, I think it's loading, isn't it? Yeah, they're slowly coming, yeah. slowly <laughs> coming up. Here we go. <laughs> wow. Yeah, oh, anyway, I went to. Nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a surprise what it's gonna come out of. This. Is this the monkey that stole your phone, Niji? Uh, no. <laughs> I will get to it. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I was really surprised, like when I landed there, I didn't have any expectations. Okay, I heard about Borneo or something, and usually in connection with like palm oil and palm trees, which is unfortunately the bad part of it. But um, I was really surprised, the nature is so beautiful there. And it, it's, it's, it's so green, like I cannot describe the, the, the green color, I could see. Um, um the first i thought was like um like photoshop but you, you, it can't be real like <laughs> it was really mad and uh yeah it's beautiful be, um, the nature is really beautiful because they have they have many national parks and um even though that um unfortunately some parts are being destroyed there because of the the, the palm plantations and and like digging lodging the the, the uh, palm trees for palm oil um there are still many national parks and thanks to that the the nature is still protected um the only thing is that um i mean it, it always had good side and bad sides right but the um the, the good thing is that they're really trying to protect it. On the other hand, they're also trying to prevent tourists from going there. So if you want to get to some of the parks, it's really, really expensive. Like some of the, the parks, uh, entry to some of the parks uh, costs like $160 sometimes, over $100. And um, I just didn't go to these, like I, I went to the cheaper ones or to like the usual ones. Um, yeah, also what I love is the, the, the wildlife there. Um, I don't know, uh, can you even recognize any of these animals? Well, yeah, for sure there's a monkey, but you know what kind of monkey it is? No, probably not, because uh, I had no clue that, that, that something like this exists actually. They are called proboscis monkeys. And um, it's like a Bornean endemite, so it, it only lives there and, and some other parts of Malaysia, I'm not sure, maybe maybe Thailand. Um, and uh, yeah, there is also the, the mm, is it work? Yeah, here. No, the pointer is really slow. I'm trying to show you the, the giant squirrel. Anyway, it's the, the picture. Uh, on the right sound down here working yeah that's a squirrel it's a yeah it's a squirrel and it's called giant malaysian squirrel because it's giant comparing normal squirrels <laughs> yeah i'm trying to point out but it doesn't really work really really slow here 
that's the that's the road I made. So I basically went from the the north east to south west, and um, I started in Sandakan. It's it's kind of a random plan. It's not really there is nothing cool. You you go there for the nature, and um, I actually had the best experience um, of the trip, but also. Uh, Probably that was the best experience of my life. Um, do you know Couchsurfing? The website Couchsurfing? Just nod your hand or something. No. <laughs> it's, the, it's the website where, where uh, uh, you can surf couch, apparently. It's like a, I wouldn't call it a social network, but the, the whole point is to host people or, or be hosted on the other side so when you travel you can you know you have like profiles and stuff and uh you see the people and in, in, in the destination you are going to and you either contact them or they can sometimes contact you back and uh you just get hosted for free like that's the whole point behind it it's pretty cool i've used it many times in, in my life but this was the best experience um i stayed with a guy who lives uh, in like typical, let's say, uh, authentic uh, Malaysian village. Um, they, they live in, uh, they call it long houses. Uh, those are uh, like large wooden houses and uh, um, they are built on the water, on the sea. So, so they, they live literally in the middle of the jungle on the sea. And uh, now I'm gonna show you some pictures. If I manage. Yeah, I'm gonna show you some pictures and talk about it. It will be more interesting. There we go. <coughs> Can you see it? Can you see the picture? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I stayed with this guy for uh, two days with two more couch surfers. And um, he actually uh, picked us up in this uh, Sandakan, which is, which is the town I, I landed by plane. And then he uh, he took us on the boat, um, or with the boat, we went on the boat to his place. Um, I actually have no clue where it was. It was literally in the middle of the jungle, somewhere on the, it's not even the sea anymore. Uh, it's like, um, you know, in the jungle, you have like those meanders and, 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 and like creeks and streams and, and basically forests on the water. So this, this is where we stayed. Uh, um, yeah, that's the board. Like, um, of course, they have no, no, no shops, no supermarkets, nothing. It's just, just a village. It's, it's just a few houses in the middle of the jungle. So, um, whatever they go shopping, whenever they need to go shopping, they, they just gather all the people who live in the jungle. They take one boat. Um, they fill the boat with, with purchases and, and they go back and they do it sometimes two, two times per week. Yeah, those are the villages. Like they're literally in the middle of nowhere. Where, where is the pointer? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, these are the villages literally built on the water, on the sea. These forests are called mangrove trees and, and mangrove forests. Um, 
and they, they basically they float on the water like they have really thick very very strong really big roots that are really deep in the water and um, like if you wanted to walk to the forest you actually couldn't because there is no like proper surface there is no soil but they I don't know how they can exist, but they just grow out of the water and because of the, like, thanks to the big roots, they, 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 you know, they, they, they can live. Can you see the mango fine. of root? Yeah, this is one of the villages. It's like a typical picture of Malaysia. Come on. Yeah, we saw a crocodile on the boat. You know, it's it's really it's really interesting um, when you come from from countries like the Czech Republic and and you go on hikes here and then you go on hikes there and then. Uh, uh, like we were going on this board and, and um, I had my my hands in the water like I would normally do here and then you just keep going and at some point you realize okay I actually shouldn't be doing that because there are crocodiles in the river so that that happened to me here Yeah, these are the mangrove uh, trees and forests. You can see that uh, they have really strong roots. And uh, here we are going through the mangrove forest. You can see that uh, it looks like a normal forest, but there is no soil, like you can actually walk there and get there just on the board. Yeah, and this is the guy's village. This is what it looks like. Like all the all the houses are literally built on the sea, on the water. It's incredible.
at a sister village again. This is this guy's house, the family. You can see that it's standing on the, on the water. This is how I played football. This is Kid. Yeah, the interesting thing, and uh, it was kind of strange for us because uh, they eat everything with hands, like they don't use any cutlery. And it's uh, especially like there when you're in the jungle and you, you don't really like wash properly and sometimes they don't even use soap and stuff. Then you have, the, the, then you have dinner in the evening and you eat it with your hands. That's that's the that's the guy in the in the back. It's the couch surfer. It, it all looks wild and it is wild, but uh, unfortunately it's not that easy to actually spot any wild animals because most of them are shy anyway and they, they won't just approach you or anything. But um, yeah, you kind of have to be careful. Like you wouldn't really swim here with crocodiles. <laughs> This is a mango forest. Here it's more visible. Yeah, we, we actually were snail hunting. Um, I don't know if you ever tried snails but these are um i don't know what they are called but they live on on these roots of the of the mangrove forest of the mangrove trees and uh we actually went when hunting like searching yeah i didn't like it by the way it's like rubber We found a snail. <laughs> yeah, this is the only way you can walk on the roots. Like there is no surface; it's it's visible here. You can walk on the roots, and that's where uh, the snails live. Yeah, I spotted this. Um, uh, the guy told me that uh, uh, this is a nest of the, the most dangerous, most venomous uh, bee 
in the world. And I actually Google it and um, apparently it's not a bee, but it's, it's, it's a hornet and it's, it's huge. And they say that um, um, if you get stung by, by, by two, it can, uh, it can kill you actually. It's, it's so venomous that, it, that, that two hornets can kill you. They're actually predators and they, um, they kill and eat normal bees and they have problems with, with these hornets there. But uh, yeah, this is, this is what, I, like, um, what I was scared of more than, than any other animals. Uh, scared of insects in general. And yeah, monkeys. And this is still not the monkey that stole my phone. This is me climbing for coconuts. It's the village again. Yeah, this is how they live when I was talking about the hygiene <laughs> and conditions. It's, um, it's a nice experience for two days, but it's also good after two days to have a proper shower and stuff and a normal bath. And um, I think you kind of appreciate more uh, the things you have at home. Um, yeah, we spent there two days and um, actually the guy said that we, we cannot take a normal shower because it, it hadn't rained for a few days, so they didn't have any water. So we had to go to the jungle um, and uh, take a swim in the pool. That was the shower we got. Yeah, this is how they live. So also interesting that it's on the water, but um, I think uh, when there's like low tide and high tide, the, the water level changes. Now it's apparently low tide, even though it's so far from the sea. And yeah, these are the people. This is the family, the two with, with baby and the other two cows of us. Okay, now, can you see the, the, the photos? Yes. Yeah, that's uh, Kinabalu National Park. It's one of the expensive ones. Like, um, you can enter the park for normal price, but if you want to climb all the way up, um, it's a volcano, but it's uh, 4,000 above sea level. And uh, you need a guide and you need to stay there overnight. And um, I think the cheapest price I found was like 250 American dollars. I didn't go there. And yeah, also it was in the clouds. High, 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 how high are these mountains? The, the, highest, the, the highest one is 4,000. Wow. It's a volcano and it's, it's the... Now I'm not sure, it's the highest in South Asia, but it's also between, I don't know how to say it, like um, between the Himalayas apparently, and uh, I don't know if there's something higher in New Zealand. Australia, maybe. Yeah, it's really high. 
but then it's so expensive to go there it's 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 cool but yeah this is this is the mountain you know where is the point there? oh here yeah. Yeah, yeah like you can you can walk some it doesn't work Like you can walk somewhere here? No. I wanna. What's the point there? <laughs> yeah, you can walk somewhere here. But then, uh, like, uh, you have to pay for the entry for the climbing part, actually. And then, then you go, there's a camp, I think it's here. And then you have to stay there overnight and then you have to go with the with the guide and, and it's actually like the shortest one is is two days but it's so so freaking expensive yeah, Yeah, let's get a bubble. Can you see it? Yeah, then I went to a town called Kotakinabalu and uh, uh, there is like, um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a national park, wow. it's a maritime park, um, uh, I guess few islands and uh, like they're all accessible but when I, when I wanted to go there I asked people around and they actually told me not to go to Gaia Islands. Um, yeah, this is the this is the dark side of Borneo. Like the nature is beautiful, but the cities are a bit dodgy and um, and dangerous. And that's what I was told um, uh, not to go to the islands or not to take a boat to the sea because they are pirates and uh, they kidnap tourists, uh, especially tourists. And um, apparently, it's full of um, illegal immigrants for from the Philippines as well. And uh, yeah, it, it's kind of strange that, that we still have these places, it feels like from a movie, but apparently they are pirates. Um, so I went to this one, it's a tiny island, and it was actually cool because it wasn't touristy at all. Um, clean water, coconuts. Uh, yeah, these are the, the Gaia Islands. And this is the island I went to. It's really small, but it's really cool. It's called Mamutik. when we were on this ball we going back to guy made it a like a party boat played music loud and he was singing and 
people are cool. There are also many turtle islands in, in um, well, in general, in, in Southeast Asia, but, but there are, um, many of them are close to or reachable from, from, from Borneo, uh, but it's also so expensive to go there. It's from a cultural village. It's kind of open at a museum, I would say. They have like five different tribes, five different cultures there. Um, yeah, it, it feels a bit touristy, but it was really nice. Like I, it was a nice experience. Um, they show you how they produce like uh, rice liquors and uh, some rice cookies and, and yeah, wine. Yeah, there are like five different tribes. They have different dresses, different colors, different habits. Yeah, these girls are making those rice. I don't know what they are called. There's some rice cookies. It's made of rice and sugar. And then it's fried on the pan. On the, yeah, on the pan. This is the uh, rice liquor. It's my Malaysian wife. <laughs> This is a welcoming ritual of uh, the tribe that's called Muru. Yeah, they have different kinds of rituals there. 
do you think you know, these are real ones or this is only for the tourist kind of thing created? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there is actually still someone out there listening. It feels so weird to be talking to the screen. <laughs> what? I'm still here. I'm listening. I'm just yeah. muted. So. Cool. cool. <laughs> I cool. just had some <laughs> chips, so I didn't want to hear <laughs> me crunch some chips. <laughs> It's fine. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's new for me too. And it's, it's kind of strange to be talking sure. <laughs> and I'm like, is there anyone actually listening, like laughing, crying or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that was the cultural village. It's called Mari Mari. Um, and then I went by ferry through Ireland called Labuan. It's not that nice, I'm gonna skip that. But through Labuan, I got to Brunei. And um, switch back. Because that's another interesting thing. Yeah, the switching is really slow. Uh, I just wanted to show you on the map, um, you know, the island, yeah, Borneo is di divided in, in, into Malaysian part and Indonesian part, but there is also a small country of Brunei. And um, it's like the, probably one of the places you have never heard of. And if you have, then you wouldn't find it on a map. I didn't know it was there either, <laughs> but it's, it's like here. So I went through Brunei as well, but, um, will be for some other time. Uh, I'll just show you the way. I went from Sandakan through, through Kinabalu, that was the, the volcano, Kota Kinabalu. And then I took a ferry here, Labuan. There is another ferry going to Brunei. And then I went through, from Brunei, I actually, and from Miri, I went to another national park that it's called Nia. I'm going to switch to pictures again. Now, how did you travel? How? You, you had a car or? No, no, no. I didn't have car. That's, that's the thing. Um, I hitchhiked. 
quite often. Uh, uh, yeah. Borneo, I hitchhike mainly, but um, I mean, there are buses. Um, in Borneo, it's more complicated. Of course, the infrastructure is pretty bad. You know, it's it's like comparing mm -hmm. Peninsula Malaysia, it's it's a different world. It's just, it's really wild. And there's only one road going like all along the, the sea, let's say, through the Malaysian part. And uh, it really takes ages. I took bus from, from Sandakan to to Kinabalu Park. That's that's the, the like the first points one two three, and uh, um, it's like two hundred kilometers or something like that, and it, it took like five and a half hours. Mm -hmm. It's it's easy, and really? you know the the road is bad, and then like sometimes you have like curves, and then of course people are relaxed, so the driver just stops and you know goes out to smoke the cigarette and stuff. Um, it really takes edge. Mm -hmm. But the rest, I hitchhike, and then I actually, um, when I was in Miri, which is gonna be now, um, I actually realized I was still too far to go all the way, uh, like down. Um, I just took a plane because that was the only only way to get. But um, yeah, when I was in Bali, we we hired this um, scooter, so we we drove a scooter there. When I was in Langkawi in Malaysia, it's it's, it's an island in Malaysia. Uh, I did the same. I got a scooter, uh, and in, in the peninsula part of Malaysia, I took buses. Uh, the public transportation there is pretty good, actually. It's it, I was I was really surprised. Mm -hmm. it's nothing comparing like Thailand and and Vietnam, and it's really well developed. Uh, but in is it full, it's like a full bus or something? Um, yeah, it's it. De well, it depends on the place. Sometimes you have like those mini buses, um, but usually you have the big ones, and they are they are surprisingly comfortable. Um, I have a picture somewhere, but I would have to dig it. Um, like uh, they are pretty comfortable, and and very often they have Wi-Fi connection, and and um, yeah, like you can you know like change the position of of the seed and and stretch your legs it's it's not even here like i was really surprised <laughs> and um mm. yeah, yeah in Malaysia in, in the peninsula part they're also pretty fast like there are some places where are not that like well covered of course but that's everywhere but the main parts are, are pretty cool they have many highways and, and highways are pretty good as well they're actually sometimes they're better than here mm. unbelievable um, but yeah, Borneo and mm -hmm. the peninsula, uh, they are like two different worlds, really. Um, I actually remember... I wanted to show you this. Uh, I don't know why it always closes. Um, to show it again. Okay, let's try this way. Okay, no. Um, yeah, um, I want to mention this because um, Borneo is a beautiful place, but I don't know for how long it will be because, um, you know, it's a big thing here in Europe with palm oil and, and to like like produce products without palm oil and stuff because it's it's everywhere um the problem is that they are cutting like real forest the rainforest there and um because they build plantations instead of it and um it's mainly for like palms and palm oil and um uh, because of that you know as, as they are cutting the the forest of course it it um, has a huge impact on the nature but it's not only the nature and the animals living there, but it's also people. So also even even the because you could see on the pictures there are you know like real Malaysians living in the jungle, and uh, there are many many like tribes like that living in the jungle. But because there are no forests, you know, it's like it damages the whole island actually, and um, that's one of the reasons why there are so many sanctuaries. They are not zoos, but they are sanctuaries in in uh, in especially in Borneo. Um, yeah, I don't know if you know the difference, but the difference is really big. You know, in in sanctuaries, they are really protecting the animals, 
and also like um, everything um, they they get from from like the tickets sold, um, all the money goes to like build the sanctuaries and for the food and 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 yeah the animals such and they have many many sanctuaries there um it's mainly for orangutans because they are dying out there as well um they have endangered um elephants they have endangered um they have also tigers but they they don't live in borneo they are in, in the peninsula part but in borneo it's uh rhinos um and uh, bears and, and monkeys also many monkeys so they have these sanctuaries and it's it's actually kind of sad when you go and you see so many you know like there are so many endangered people and um i went to a few of these sanctuaries and one of them was for orangutans this is the one that it's um i hope you can see the picture this is a great yeah. picture yeah yeah it's it's cool mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a good one huh? yeah it's really uh, yeah and they they come close enough to people these uh orangutans? no well not really yeah yeah not not really or not here not in this one and, uh, uh, it's actually funny you can hear um chinese people talking <laughs> and that was at the beginning they were still chinese but then they closed the airports in in china or airports in in singapore and malaysia for the planes from china and all of a sudden there were no tourists which was also cool but yeah at the beginning they were still there uh yeah they they don't really come to people here and they're like all the animals uh they're actually not really wild they're well they're wild but they are not aggressive they're not predators so so they're usually shy of people in in general uh so you don't actually run into them in, in, in the wildlife, like in, in, in the wild. Uh, yeah, here they are like under highest protection and uh, what they usually do, they, if they found them anywhere, uh, they, they put them there, then they, they, are, they have some stages usually, like they go under observation, then they uh, actually teach to, they feed them, then they teach to uh, like live in the normal life for them in the wild. And um, so once the, they are actually kind of brought up and, and taught how to live uh, in the wild, they are released to the wild again. Uh, but it takes some time, of course, to, um, to learn it and, and, you know. And do they feed them in the sanctuaries? Yeah, of course, of course. You can see here. That, um, oh, yeah, bananas. Like a, it was like a feeding uh, time. That's why everyone was there. Otherwise, it's difficult to see oh, them. There is somebody on the side. There's a guy. Yeah, now I see. Mm -hmm. yeah they have bananas here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was like... Um, they had, the whole sanctuary had like two parts. This is like... China wildlife, so it's the higher stage already. They are, you know, in a way they are in the, in the wild already. But mm -hmm. still, there's a fence, you know, somewhere, and they are still being fenced up. But they are pretty much living the same life as they would live in in in, in the jungle. Uh, but they have like uh, the earlier stages when they found them and they they know they are not able to live um, normal life. Uh, so there, this is like uh, some place when they observe them uh, first. You can see that now not like in the jungle, but this kind of looks like a zoo. But that's why also no, uh, no people can go there and they cannot see you because there is like, you know, a pro um, glass protection and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they have to be trained to be released back to the wild. And uh, there was another sanctuary I visited. It's actually right next to it. And um, these are also kind of uh, endemites. They only live in Borneo and some other parts of Malaysia and uh, South Thailand, I guess. But they are also endangered and, and very rare to, to spot in, in, like in the wild, in the jungle. Uh, in English, they are called sun bears. I don't even know the word in English. I, I think we Google it and it was Malaysian bear or something. Uh, 
they are they are really cute. Um, it's the it's the smallest bear in the world. Like it's the oh, yeah. smallest species of of uh, bear in the world. And uh, they're actually not dangerous at all. Die <laughs> as well. Um, they have a different purpose in 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 the nature. They are not really predators. And uh, yeah, they're kind of cute actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they look really harmless and innocent like this one <laughs> are they so? they're not are they sorry are they uh harmless and innocent or <laughs> are they no no well well of course any animal can be harmful but no they're not um I mean, from what I read, um, they're really shy and uh, they will run away. Like they, they wouldn't approach you at all. You know, totally different from the wild bears in, in, in Canada or anywhere. Uh, they are also really small comparing other bears, and they they have um, like really a huge uh, um, paws because uh, they they dig a lot in the ground because they eat. Um, like caterpillars and bugs and stuff. And um, yeah, that's basically their purpose. Like, like, yeah. They rest a lot as well, they say. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I like this picture most. This one is cool. <laughs> it was taken through like additional binoculars, through camera, but through binoculars. Nice. Now I'm going to. Uh, Niak National Park. There we go. Yeah, for for me it was a totally different world. Like I have never been uh, to Asia in general at all. So it was my first time in Asia, and um, like first days I was in Kuala Lumpur, which is like for most of people it's just a business city. But I was literally enjoying just little things like sitting in the park under palm and uh, yeah, like watching new birds and listening to new sounds because this, the sound of the jungle is so different. It's so noisy and um, you, you, you don't even know what, what actually makes these noises. And um, even the flowers are different and trees and, and, and I really love that. And um, this is one of the trees in, 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 this is in the national park, in, in the Nia National Park. I don't know what they are called, but like you can never see this here. The different kinds of rules. Uh, yeah. These are the caves. It was a really cool experience. Um, I was actually staying at the hostel and then um, I woke up in the morning and there were two national parks. But I had only one day and not even a whole day because I had the flight in the evening. And uh, of course I wanted to go to both as, as always, but um, I knew I wouldn't make it. It was too much. And uh, um, I was checking like leaflets and, and the board at the hostel and there was a guy who came to me and um, he asked, um, are you going to a national park? And I was like, yeah, I want to go. I just don't know to which one because one is, cl it's nice, but it's, uh, it's it's farther and the other one might be nice as well but um it's it's uh closer and um and the guy said well if you want to go we can go to the farther one together and then we then we went together actually and uh um i wasn't expecting too much but uh i thought i would like it because i i like caves and and yeah that kind of stuff but when we got there, I was so impressed. Um, I actually didn't know this. This is um, apparently this is one of the largest cave systems in the world. 
at all. And um, this is what it looked like at the beginning, like, oh yeah, it's okay. I've seen many caves in my life. But then we walk farther and farther and farther. And then uh, you actually get into uh, the total dark and uh, you have to have a light on because you don't see anything there. And it's like one and a half kilometers walk through like total darkness there. Yeah, this is uh, like the beginning part of the cave. And then actually, as we were uh, walking together, the guy said, well, and I'm actually happy that I asked you and we went together because I don't know if I could walk you along. Mm. You can hear bats. There are like hundreds of bats everywhere. Yeah, this is what it looks like in the cave. Yeah, and then you just keep walking, like you don't see anything, and all of a sudden you have like those windows, let's say, like like the light uh, coming in the cave on the surface, like this one. You can hear the noise of bats. And there are really hundreds, maybe thousands of bats. Yeah, dark area ahead. <laughs> yeah. And this is when a guy said, um, I'm happy not to be here alone because there are snakes. And um, as we were actually going there, we ran into people who were going the opposite direction, like coming back. And the guy said, hey guys, be careful because there are snakes on the on the path. I have a video somewhere. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Let's move it forward. Yeah. Let's, let's greet some snakes again. <laughs> let's greet some snakes. That was like completely dark. It's right next to your move a bit harder. <laughs> oh my god. That's how you almost step on the snake. But unfortunately I cannot capture it on the camera. It's just it's a photo. The same one. 
know anything, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's just the voices, you know, the, the conversation. Mm. Yeah. What's the picture of the snake? What was the whole point? Yeah, this is, you know. Yeah, here are the intersections. You just keep walking in the dark and then all of a sudden... This one is a dead end, but there are, there's at least one more. Oh, look there, look up now. What is it? That's the window <laughs> I was talking about. You know, it's a, it's a hole from the surface coming down to the cave. Right. That's how the light is getting in. This this is cool. The light. Nice how the light comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And those bats everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, crocodiles. <laughs> no hands in the water. Yeah, and then that's last place of Borneo, which is also beautiful. But that, that was one of the bad days of mine because it really rained and it rained a lot. I got totally soaked. Yeah, there is not much to see. Hmm. Yeah, some hiking trails are like this, literally. Like they're really neglected. Um, sometimes there is someone who tells you like, hey, you shouldn't go there because it's quite dangerous. Sometimes they don't even care. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like this. It took me a while to get used to these trails because uh, yeah, if you go on a hike here, there is no danger at all. Like you don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be, you know, you don't really have to be too careful, let's say. But there, it took me a while to get used to it, that it's different. And then, you know, you just keep walking and you follow the trails. Like I would never go to jungle. Then all of a sudden there is this spider. <laughs> In front. This is really so big, wow. <laughs> and it's, this is crazy, like you just keep walking and then it's really like that. Then you walk somewhere and then, you know, as you're like, you want to hold yourself some, some, at some point, like you want to, you, you want to touch a tree or something. And then you touch a tree and you actually see that you almost touch a, a huge bug or a spider. Wait, yeah. what is it? Yeah, is it a real spider? Yes, of course. Why is it? Of course. Mm -hmm. Is it real? How big is this? It's a huge. <laughs> Look at really it. huge. Look wow. At I never saw it's such. a trick. How big is it? You, I don't like... know, but it's huge. <laughs> oh my god. I would <laughs> yeah, Look at this. Meter. <laughs> no, 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 it's not, but it's. I don't know. Couple. Uh, Two centimeters. It looks like it's more than I can it. spread my fingers, so it's for like 20 centimeters in total. Oh, God. Oh. Hey, Does it bite? Yeah. <laughs> Is it poisoned? <laughs> I don't know. I tried to Google this one. I mean, I tried to find this species, but I didn't find it because there are so many spiders. 
um, I don't know. Uh, what I was told is that most of them are not. Mm -hmm. Some of them are for sure. But usually the like the big ones that, that they build like huge webs, uh, they're usually not. Um, but you mm -hmm. don't, right? Like you have no clue, but even if it's not, you don't want to have it landed on your face. No. <laughs> it's like, it's, no, no. As big, <laughs> it's as big as your face. Yeah. Ooh. That's awful. Yeah, it's it's really disgusting, and uh, yeah, that's 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 jungle, you know. And then you keep <laughs> talking, and uh, all of a sudden there is a snake in your way, and and uh, things like that. Or or yeah, I, I, I think I was scared most of of like insect, like like you know, mm. of being bitten by by like mosquitoes and and getting some disease and and like. Mm -hmm. Dangerous like old. Jurassic Park insect. Yeah. Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Um, first, it was alright because um, I thought, okay, that's like authentic experience to have like tropical rain in the tropical rainforest. But I just got totally soaked because I spent like three hours there in this. Yeah, and then I basically walked barefoot because everything was just so. The good thing about this rain is that it's really warm <laughs> and it's refreshing for a few minutes. It looks dirty. Yeah, it's like orange. Is it sulfur? Yeah, yeah this is like normal path, you know. But since um, it had been raining so much, it was like so bad. It was literally a stream. I was walking through a stream. Mm. That's a normal path with a water, <laughs> normally. Yeah, it looked like that. That's the snake I was talking about. Oh. Yeah, I think these. At are least not, you can see it. <laughs> yeah, but these are not uh, poisonous. I think. No. Mm -hmm. It's not a mamba, but it's easy to step on it. Or is it? It's easy to touch it because it it has almost the uh, same color as as like the plants around. Mm. I was like this in my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was the the trail, the path. Yeah, it just totally thrown into a twig. <laughs> I was already mad and tired. <laughs> mm. But these national parks are really beautiful. Like normally, if it doesn't rain as so much. Because it's like untouched nature. Yeah. Same. <laughs> this is how I started to walk because it was the easiest way. <laughs> Aren't there bugs in the in the water? No, there are not. No, it's like the water is really clean here, and, and there are not really oh, bugs. Okay. <laughs> and that was a crazy experience. Yeah, 
this is the proboscis monkey, they call it. It's really cool to see it because you can see it anywhere else or in just very few places. It's the one with it's, the nose. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it has like this long nose. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> really funny. Yeah, the, here is the, this is a nice picture. The nose is really huge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing that um, there are quite a few in, in, in this national park. People literally go there to see them. You can see them there a lot. But maybe because it was raining or I don't know, that like I just I just didn't run into any. And um, um, the funny thing is that um, I didn't see any. But then I came back and I was already waiting for the for the boat back because um, it, you have to get there on the boat. So I was waiting for the boat, and uh, they just came to us like this, like all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But they are only in Malaysia. You find them only there. Yeah, um, you find them in Borneo. I think you find them in in Malaysia in the peninsula part as well, but not, you know, in in such a big number. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know. Usually, these animals can be found um, partly in in uh, South Thailand as well. Mm. Um, but um, I mean, Borneo is especially famous for these monkeys because they're really endemites. Mm -hmm. They're called proboscis. I never heard of it before. It's just now I know because I've heard it so many times. <laughs> uh, I don't even know the name in Czech. Uh, yeah. So spider, monkeys. Uh, that's all from Borneo. Um, if you're not tired, and you find it interesting, I can continue for a bit longer with the peninsula part. Um, it's up to you. Well, from my part, I want to say thank you very much. I have to go. Sure. <laughs> thank you very much. It was very interesting. You're welcome. Yeah. I hope that... It was and, uh, interesting and you were the first time in the jungle, I just want to ask. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, was uh, yeah, well, everything was my first time there. Like, um, it was my first time in Asia, so it was my first time in, in, in Malaysia as well, my first time in Borneo, and okay. everything was first time. Like, uh, all these animals and, and plants I've seen for the first time in my life, and Mm. Uh, yeah, like all the hikes I, I, I went on in the jungle, I was so excited. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these were still still kind of cool, except for the one in the rain. Uh, but I've done some in, um, in the other parts, and, and some of them are really tough. And mm. in, in the Cameroon Highlands, I, I went on a hike that um, I, w I, I took a trail that uh, most likely was supposed to be closed. Uh, but it wasn't like it's normally closed uh, in the monsoon season, and there was a you know a statement like the announcement on the tree saying basically the same. I was closed until January, and I was already there at the end of February. Uh, so I thought, okay, I just I just gonna take a risk because I, I didn't have any other option. But uh, that was a hardcore one. Like, yeah, I think it, it was supposed to be closed and. Um, it's, I, I can't remember the time, but the first part was okay, like my normal time, and it was more than half the way, and it took me 45 minutes, but then the last part was less than half, it was like two and a half, and, and it took me almost two hours, seriously, like two hours for really? two minutes, because I, I, <laughs> I had to like climb and use ropes, and it was... Yeah. It was muddy. I had to walk through streams, through rivers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have like picture from that. Maybe some other time. I don't know if we could do it now. So, um, and uh, it was really slippery and muddy. And sometimes there were parts when I had to. There was like a. I don't know how to describe it. Um, um, that there was like a like a ditch, you know. You had to, so you couldn't walk around, you had to go through the ditch, but there were also fallen trees. So you couldn't just walk, you had to go under, you had to crawl. 
and oh, they wow. were muddy, so I had to crawl through the mud and very adventure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's cool. I mean, it's like it's a nice experience. And at the beginning, I was afraid. I have to say, and and I always walk with like full respect. Um, mm -hmm. Because here is nothing like you know it's, here is so, forest and you have people everywhere and, and marks and stuff, but there it's it's wild. Uh, but I think I just somehow got used to it, and then uh, I was just being careful. I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. the jungle like like taking shortcuts like here definitely not. But as long as you follow the trails, then then you are quite fine. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think it's like. You know, you have to become a part of the nature. Like you find out that most of the animals are, um, they would be dangerous, but they are not aggressive. So they're usually shy and they hide somewhere. And mm -hmm. it's difficult to like run into them, to see them. Um, yeah, that's what you figure out. But then, yeah, I would say insect and, and like snakes and, and spiders. Land I want to meet this kind of spider that's yeah. huge. Oh, I was would freak yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you were traveling alone? Or? Yeah, I was. A, yeah, I was alone. I was alone, but um, I met a lot of people. Like, um, yeah, it's always this, uh, with these culture foes. Yeah, then I hitchhiked. So yeah. yeah, at hostels and um, yeah. I had a friend in in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, I met people in, in, in when I was in Thailand. I talked mm -hmm. like locals as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, great. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And hopefully next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we can we can do it some other time. Yeah. <laughs> Seems that the quarantine uh, is gonna last for a bit. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It was longer than 40 minutes. I think Zoom. Uh, Zoom yeah, I was thinking. The time yeah, we, now. The we haven't. We haven't been kicked out. Uh, no. I think it's probably they, because of the quarantine. Yeah, thing. I think they have made some changes. Also, there are some discounts yeah. and stuff. Some stuff is for free, so maybe it, it works normally now, like without them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So bye bye yeah. everyone. Thank you very much, Irka. Bye. -bye. You're <laughs> bye -bye. welcome. Bye. Take care. So, what about the rest? What do you guys think? No one's talking. Because everybody's on mute. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm off mute for a second. No, it's amazing. I mean, I think I'd be too afraid to go there, though. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> like that it's that, that, it's that a, wild and, you, get and you know, snakes and spiders and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just when, different. When the corona crisis has ended, you can organize a trip for some people and you can be kind of a guide already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it, it, it really took me a while to get used to it, seriously. Like, I was, I was like, you know, um, I tell you from the beginning, well, um, when, I, when, I, when I took off here, it was like three degrees or something. Then we went through China. We had a stopover in China, in Urumqi, it was minus 15. And then I landed in Kuala Lumpur and it was 36. And seven hours later, after 47 hours of traveling, because we got delay, we, I had to stay there overnight and stuff like that. And uh, that was something. And then I, was, I spent like two days in Kuala Lumpur. I was sweating as hell, like I was literally dying. And then... Uh, then I actually flew to, to Borneo and then all of a sudden, you know, it was like four days since I left, five days maybe later, the totally different place, the different culture, climate, everything. And then I stayed with this guy, you know, in the middle of the jungle, there was no even signal. And uh, um, yeah, like we were on this boat uh, through these like, you know, streams and, and, and mangrove forest. And it was like, oh, there is a crocodile. Oh, there are monkeys. <laughs> like crocodile, what? <laughs> so it's um, it's a completely different world. It's it's so different. Yeah. And you get used to it, you know, like for the locals is it's just normal. It's like for us, I don't know, like like all the birds we have or like winter we have snow. Um yeah, I, I, you get used to it. But uh, 
Yeah, you kind of have to be careful, I guess. Like, because you can't go. Yeah, to, I just like, I, like I, here, you know, like here, right. I, care, I just take shortcuts all the time, and that there, no, I would never do it. Like, it's it's right. all, like, you know, very bushy sometimes, and even the plans. I was even afraid of the plans. You didn't know the plans, you know, like they can be poisonous as well, or they can be like itchy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are also some palms that are, um, I don't know what kind of palm um, this was, but uh, they, they are spiky, you know? And as I was saying, like going through the ditch or you wanna go um, around the puddle and you, you just wanna hold something, you know? So you, you touch the palm and they're like, oh my God, because they are spiky sometimes and, and you just cannot walk through it because yeah, that's jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, do you think six six weeks was I, I would imagine that would be a like a that's a long I don't I mean did you feel like you needed a day to rest or were you just on the move every day um well honestly I feel like six weeks was just just perfect for me because mm -hmm. um, yeah well it was perfect like um I was supposed to leave after five, so I was in my fourth week, and um, um, you know, before I, I um, actually um, found out that my flight was canceled, but I kind of was expecting that already. But I felt like I didn't feel like leaving. I felt like staying still. I, I felt like mm -hmm. and I had some plans, like I, I still wanted to visit a few places, and I knew I didn't have enough time anymore. And I was like, no, and maybe if it's like that, maybe I can cancel it and get refunded and stay for a bit longer. But then when I had these six weeks, I felt like it was just enough and I, and I need to like stop for a while. And, and, you know, sometimes it's just nice to have your own bed and, and like be in the same place and, and cook for yourself yeah. and have your like spices and cheese on your shelf. And that mm -hmm. I start missing. Uh, but other than that, it was all right. You know, the... Big advantages in these countries that it's um, it's it's still hot like every day, so you don't really care about the weather. It rains rarely. It rains quite a lot in um, in in the mountains, uh, but as long as you are like in the mainland and especially in the cities, it's it's rather rare. It's usually a storm and then it's gone, and then mm -hmm. you know you wake up next morning and it's 40 again, and the sun is right. coming and it's uh, well it might not be for everyone because sometimes it's really too hot especially in Kuala Lumpur when it's like 45 and it's you know in the concrete jungle it's not good there is no air but if you're in the nature it feels different I don't really mind like like hot and uh yeah so the weather is is good most of the time so it's it's not like here that you have to plan and check the board forecast and or even Scandinavia you know like <laughs> you go there and, and it rains uh, seven days of out of seven <laughs> that's the good thing and uh, yeah. what i like about it is that that everything is not everything but but uh, you have lots of fresh fruits and like seafood and it's mm -hmm. everywhere in the streets like you just you just walk out and you can get it from like small um i wouldn't even call them farmers but like people having like little garden and and doing like like you know little fishing and selling fish and, and like fish products and, and fruits products and, and juices it's like everywhere and it's fresh you know all year wrong so um that's what i'm missing here <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um yeah malaysia is a good place i think it's 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 it's, it's a place to be um apparently i haven't been everywhere like in all the countries and i haven't seen all malaysia but i've seen a lot and um, a good, very good impression. Like people are super nice, probably the nicest people in the world. I, I cannot imagine anyone being more nicer. And um, um, yeah, like Thailand is, I guess there are nice places too and quiet, but um, I didn't really go to the most famous ones, you know, to the most touristy ones, like, like mm -hmm. uh, PP and, and those, Krabi. Uh, but still, it felt so touristy, and it's um, like I don't understand. People say Thailand is cheap, but it's not true anymore. Like it, it's no longer valid. 
it's it's not cheap at all well probably especially not in the touristy areas no you know? but but you know i went also i went to colipa which is still kind of touristy but then i went through the mainland back to malaysia and it's the place where no one speaks english a word it's like it, there is no one and uh it still was more expensive than in malaysia it wasn't that cheap like it's still cheaper than here but it's it's not that cheap considering the price level like what people earn there and, and like mm -hmm. given the fact it's thailand uh, right no malaysia was definitely cheaper and uh, i don't know about indonesia i guess it might be cheaper but i was uh, only in bali bali is overpriced like um it's super over overpriced it's 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 pretty expensive you can find uh that's what i was doing like you can find um cheaper places if you just go a few streets farther from the center and you meet locals and stuff uh, but it was still comparable to malaysia let's say it wasn't cheaper and uh, yeah like I, I feel like it's it's got everything and people speak english pretty much in malaysia because it's it's a former british colony Mm -hmm. so english is like the second language there anyway right yeah i like it i want to come back at some point for sure yeah. yep all right well i'm gonna get going as well okay cool we can uh, time or yeah i have a few places and so thanks again, no, thanks again for sharing i mean it was really really cool pictures and Great to see someplace I've never been. Um, yeah. So thanks again for sharing. I appreciate it. A pleasure. So, all right. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. See you around. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, for the presentation. I'm going to go to sleep already as well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so um, take care. Talk to you tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, take care. Okay, good night. Bye.